Here we go. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> oh, God, that didn't sound great. I know. I, I talked to you a little bit about it this morning. I'm a little like, we're not going to get into it, but oh boy. I will say that I have an appreciation that I don't have children because the world is a very crazy place and I don't want to get into it deeply, Yes, but I can only imagine what it's like raising a child with the world in chaos. It feels that way anyway. Right. Right. Yeah. And we do talk about current events and um yeah and you're right it is a lot it is a lot to process ourselves it, and it does make us think about the fact that we don't have kids and how parents have to deal with all the things happening in the world beyond themselves and uh yeah it's all very stressful already so we could only imagine what it must feel like so do you think parents are taking that all into consideration or do you think they're so busy that they're like the news is the news and and by the way it doesn't it i do understand that we are bombarded with social media and yeah. all these news cycles that are hitting us 24 7 and a mm -hmm. lot of people say yeah the history, you know the news is the same we just get it a lot more so it feels more intense right but i've been listening to like all these different types of podcasts talking about the state of the world right now and mm -hmm. it sounds to me based on these experts, mm -hmm. not my words, that it is getting really bad right now. So I don't know. I'm not laughing at it because it's not yeah. funny. But at the same time, it's tough to decipher. No, I'm, I'm just what... laughing because people are just being blunt about it at this point. It's not like no one's trying to sugarcoat what's going on um, at all. So yeah, that's why it's I was laughing about it. It's hard to decipher, it. you know, what mm -hmm. we're being overstimulated with, with the news cycle, or mm -hmm. if this right. is really, we're in bad shape. Regardless, I do wonder, back to my question, yeah. if parents are even that concerned about it, or I guess it, some will be and some won't, right? Yeah, it's really hard to say. I think it's different for every person. I think that it really depends on so many factors, right? Like if someone has one kid, it might be different than having four or five or six. Uh, it depends on the day-to-day -day schedule. It depends on how influenced the parent is over world issues that are happening right now. Um, so yeah, I don't know the answer to that, but like we said this morning, we feel, we appreciate the fact that that's another layer that we don't have to focus on. Well, it's off our plate because we chose to be child-free, obviously, mm -hmm. but it is upsetting because we have a lot of friends that have kids and it's, it's of gotta course, be, it's gotta course. be tough if they are paying attention and it is in their atmosphere as far as like what's going on in the world and locally too. Like yeah, there's a lot of crazy of things happening at schools. And yeah. I can only imagine having a child and sending them off to school, going through a metal detector, still not knowing if they're going to be okay at the end of the day. Right. We didn't have that when we were growing up. Um, well, I mean, the most I got was got, I got beat up in the playground, you know, by the local bully, you know, that happened to me. Yeah. But it also depends what school you went to, right? You happen to be in a really nice neighborhood with a nice school. True. It, it definitely depended on what kind of school you went to, but. I mean, times are different. Um, our parents are different than parents now. Uh, and like I said, some people are uber interested and involved in what's happening. And some people aren't because they have their own tragedies happening in their lives, yeah. you know, just like child free people do sometimes. I mean, we've spoken to a couple of people that don't really know what's going on because they're dealing with major um, crisis right now. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think let, it depends. Let me ask you, because I did grow up in more of a suburban neighborhood, and you grew up in New York City and Queens. Mm -hmm. were, were, like, guns a factor, being like you were more of a city grow, yeah. you know, childhood and I was more suburban? Would yeah, it, it was definitely different depending on what school that you went to. Um, my sister went to public school, and I went to a private school. We were just different, had different goals. Uh, I was... Um, you know, an A student, and I worked really hard to get into this private school and, uh, you know, went and my parents, you know, helped out. But so my school felt, quote unquote, safe. Right. Um, but I know that her school didn't. Uh, and in Queens, it's very much a factor. I mean, there's so many amazing public schools around the country, but it just happened to be that in Queens, New York, the uh, private schools were better as far as safety and other factors were concerned. So I don't know. I didn't experience it myself. 
Um, I think there was more violence around my grade school, like after school, grade school things that were happening. But I did not get to experience it in high school. But I do think, from what I remember, that guns definitely were a factor. But not as not a factor as far as like um, active shooters inside the school, but a factor as there was an incident involving students outside of school. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So it depends. So it's been around, but it's obviously a lot yeah. more prevalent. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it's also uh, with our, we have monthly themes in our community. And this month's theme is uh, about our gratitude for a child-free life. And we're really going deep within. We're not just talking about the freedoms that we have, right? And the spontaneity and the time. We're really taking a look deep inside about what we're grateful for. And we just started a theme today. We have a different theme every month. And I'm excited to see because I feel like the people in our community um, get really deep with um, they're very thoughtful and uh, they come up with some really insightful comments and remarks and questions. So I'm excited about diving in that into that this month alongside our community uh, because, yeah, they've just been great. I mean, we just went through Halloween and had so much fun sharing costumes and and old school costumes and all of that. Yeah. So this month, we're going to get into um, all sorts of gratitude that we have for choosing this lifestyle. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And we're also coming off the heels of one of our members was in Austin. Yeah. Shout out to Rand. And yeah. we actually met up with him. We had some barbecue. Yes. We hung out. And I am thoroughly enjoying this. Again, I've said this before. Yeah. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but you know, being an introvert and not having a lot of friends or, you know, it's been tougher for me to make friends. Mm -hmm. It's been so easy with this community. So I'm, I'm yeah. ever grateful. And I thank all of our members. And if you are interested, I'm going to do a shameless, but go to the childfreeconnection.com. Yeah. We love new people. It's fun. It is, it's a lot of it, fun. You know, we do this full time. So yeah, it, it's we, a lot of fun. It's super engaging and it's, mm -hmm. it's a good time. So yeah, check exactly. it out if you can. And we had such a good time with Rand and um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's so much to chat about today. And I thought that, I mean, we already got into it a bit because people do ask us how um, do we ever think about life with the uh, the fact that we don't have the added stressor. I'm going to call it a stressor for now. People might get offended for that. But it is a stress having to raise a uh, kind global citizen, at least to me it is, to make sure that you're doing it right. And I can imagine that it could put some stress on a person. So how, you know, people always ask us, like, that's something that we don't need to think about. But I also feel like that translates into we must not really have any real stress, right? Because we don't have kids. And that's always been really interesting to me. The idea that people without kids are just sitting around with their feet up and not doing anything, especially when we know people in our community that have so much stress on and so much responsibility that it would be nearly impossible for them to add um, something else that they're responsible for in their life. So I, I just always think it's funny because people still to this day imagine that you and I have all this free time. Yeah, I mean, well, getting back, I think most parents would agree that having children is a lot very stressful at times. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you're affecting anybody. <laughs> And we also had set that caveat earlier when we started the yes. podcast that we're not going to apologize yes. for, for that kind of stuff. So just, yes. yeah, I think, you know, all stress comes in different shapes and sizes, obviously. And it, it's very, it pertains to individuals. I, I, I think kids obviously are an added responsibility, therefore an added stress factor slash concern. Mm -hmm. So yes. Um, I think that takes on a whole new dynamic that we don't know nothing about and probably don't have the qualifications, obviously don't have the qualifications to really talk about what Correct. types of stresses those are. I mean, we see the front facing ones, you know, the, when we hang out with our friends with kids and what they stress about mm -hmm. what we see, but we don't really know the underbelly of the type of stress parents go through. I mean, we can imagine like health concerns and what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. And it also depends too, because I have some girlfriends that are moms and they really share all the details with me and uh they really get into it and so i don't even have to imagine i mean i feel like i have a front row seat 
into do, what that's all about. Do you think they talk to you also, like when they're up at night, like really scared and worried? Do you think they talk about that stuff or do you like full transparency? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Full. Tra I get full <laughs> transparency. I mean, it's not that I've gotten that from everyone, but from my best friends who are moms. Yeah, I've I've received full transparency. So what would you is there a common denominator? Is there one? What is the main stress that you hear the most from parents? Is it safety? Is it, or does it vary? It varies. It varies. Yeah. I mean, it could be a health issue that they're going through. It could be stress. I've had some friends deal with some um, cyberbullying, some social media, inappropriate behavior by others, you know, finding them online, um, which really freaks me out <laughs> yeah. all the all how easy it is to get to your child um you know talk about stresses as far as trying to get a scholarship for your you know because you're an athlete and how stressful that can be trying to get into the school that you want for your academics uh there's just i feel that every layer has just been um a different type of stress and i've been privy to to understanding it so yeah I can imagine the mm -hmm. financial stress is a big one. With yeah, parents. yeah, and I mean a lot of that falls under uh, the financial stress as well. Not always, but it does. And we were talking about that too, actually. Finances. Yeah, which brings us back to our point, which is yeah. we also stress about finances. Yeah, exactly. Again, we're not comparing, but you no. know, we aren't kicking our feet up. We're not just Netflixing and doing nothing all day. In fact, right. I feel like we're really busy and stressed out a lot of the time. You we know, are. I mean, we are, we're constantly putting forth practices of us breathing and calming down yes. because yes. there it's is so much quite stress. Comical. Like how many like things we have to put into practice. Well, and, and to give parents credit, we always are saying, I don't know how they do it because we're dealing with so much on our end. Right. And I would love to know those who are listening or watching on YouTube, yeah. if they, you know, let us know like what kind of stresses you're dealing with because I don't think we're an outlier on no, far as our stress no, level. No, of course not. Of course not. I mean, people work, they have jobs. That in itself is a huge stressor. Right. Uh, trying to pay your bills is a huge stressor. But yeah, financially, um, once again, people just imagine, oh, there's only two of you. You must be. And yeah, of course, there is there is um, the capability to perhaps save more money or do more things. But it's not everybody across the board. Not everybody is taking a vacation whenever they want. Not everybody is hopping on a cruise or a jet setting around the world. But yeah, that opportunity is there for a lot of people. And if someone is child free and they are bringing in a, uh, bringing in a, signif a significant amount as far as their income is concerned, uh, yeah, they have a bunch of extra money to do as they please. You know, they don't have to worry about raising a child. Yeah, but I feel, and maybe, you know, I'm just, there's a thought just popped in my head, but, you know, we have to also prepare for our retirement years. There's no guarantee kids are going to take care of our parents, their, their parents financially. We've talked oh, about that yeah. in length. Of course not. But we know that we're not going to have kids to take care of us as far as that's concerned. And mm -hmm. not that we want that and putting, we talk about not putting a burden on children having to take care of us, Yeah, but we do need to prepare financially for right. our future because yeah. it will be just us and we will need to maybe hire people to take care of us or yeah, of maybe course. technology will catch up and I will catch up and I'll, I always say this, but we'll have technology taking care of us. Yes. Whether that's robotics or whatever it happens to believe be. Believe that. <laughs> yeah, we, we truly believe we're, yeah, we're that by the time we need the help, like we'll be able to get it. We'll, we'll be able to get it. I mean, it mm -hmm. seems like it's coming faster than yeah. we even think it's another podcast, but, um, yeah. but yeah, financial stress is a, is a day to day thing. And yeah, many other course. stresses, you know, health stresses and, uh, you know, what yeah. we're going to, what we're going to, um, you know, making sure that our friends are okay. Like there's just a lot. There's a lot I know, that weighs, moving weighs on. is a stress, um, a big one. And yeah. uh, I mean, although there's a freedom to move and there's a freedom to try something new, and that's part of the beauty of having a child-free life, but moving in itself can be really stressful, especially when you're starting from scratch or moving to a country. And that's another thing I noticed about the people in our community a lot of them have just left their country wherever they are um, and just sort of picked up and went somewhere else and started a new life because they could. And um, taking advantage of that is, 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 is beautiful and having the freedom to do that. But 
when you land a new country, you don't really have, you know, financial, a financial backing that's going to last you a long time. You need to meet friends. You need to find a new job. You need to build community. You need to find a place to live. It is very stressful. Do you obviously. think parents look at that as like, you know, oh, really? That's so stressful. You go to all off to some new place and you've got to like rebuild your life a little bit? I don't know. I mean, I guess it depends on the type of person, right? And we've talked about this before. Like we have friends that are parents that are like extremely understanding of the types of stress that we deal with that are different. And then there's people that, you know, again, the people that think we're just laying around doing nothing. So, um, and by the way, people that have the ability to lay around and do nothing, like kudos to them. I don't know why that's seen as such a, uh, yeah. frowned upon <laughs> like thing if somebody has has the ability maybe they have some finances saved up and maybe they just want to take a year or however long to chill I mean we have someone in our building right now that's taking a year sabbatical and you know just traveling enjoying his life he's young he doesn't have any kids and I don't know why that's so look down upon hey people should if they can people should i wish we could yeah you know <laughs> you know I, I do see a lot of accounts and yeah. you know whether they're child free or not and it seems like their life is travel and have fun you know and i'm like why are, what are we doing wrong uh, but you're also <laughs> looking at social media right you're looking at the best of the best yeah. like if we only showed the best of the best i mean we would be doing a lot know, here I right I get, I get so it. it's that's just, just you're getting the highlight reel of yeah. someone's life yeah, yeah. that's true mm -hmm. yeah well i know i really do appreciate all of our opportunities i mean one of the big ones that stands out to me is when we moved from new york city to austin and yeah. being able to do that relatively seamlessly during the pandemic was 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 relatively nice. seamless to complete nightmare well i'm saying because we didn't have to bring kids with us and right. we didn't have to find right, right, schools right. and we right. didn't have to right make sure they had friends yeah and no when, i understand what you're saying i'm just laughing because it was a, a complete, new city it was a complete us. nightmare to move yeah 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 no i understand what you're saying i'm just joking yeah getting acclimated um, to a new city just the two of us is, yeah. was hard enough yes. you know yeah. but it was but it's a luxury that we appreciate. Yeah. And I remember when the broker was showing us places and whenever we would get to a place, they would always start talking about the school district and, you know, if this, how great the school was and it was just a few blocks away or that there was a bus. Or, and we always had to say, like, we were child free. So that wasn't really a factor that we were looking into. But automatically people wanted to highlight um the school system when we were looking at places yeah so yeah, that, thought, that was I mean, just an automatic like looking at us looking at our age they must have kids yeah right? i mean it's it's i get it it's a realtor yeah. it's it's a way for a realtor to really you know yeah push, push a sale over the line so to speak because yeah. you have yeah. kids in school school a good school district you're good to go um but yeah what are some of the t top now that we're here we're acclimated even though we're busy and we're <laughs> clearly stressed as we mentioned earlier not all the time we shouldn't say we're stressed all the time but a lot of the time. Uh, um, what are some of your favorite freedoms as far as, you know, the child free lifestyle and some of your afraid is free? Not necessarily perks, because this is all falling into our monthly theme with our community, which yeah, is gratitude. gratitude. So mm -hmm. what are you grateful for? Yeah, I think the, the thing and we've definitely talked about it before that I'm most grateful for is having the time to take care of me. Um, and that is a full time job <laughs> in itself. Because I do need to take practices into consideration when I'm not doing well, right? Whether it's my health, I've had a lot of challenges with my health over the years, and that's definitely a priority, or whether it's my mental health. And those two things need to be taken care of, right? Like, even if it's um, figuring out, I mean, I'm working with one of my friends right now, and she's been such a great guide. We're working on intuition practices, but in between those practices are a lot of ways to um, to control my nervous system, right? And so there's a lot of breathing. There's all these different techniques that she's teaching us to really be able to quiet our minds um, from all the noise so that we can make the best decisions for ourselves, which I really like because it'll also correlate with um, my program, which teaches women how to quiet the noise so they can figure out if a child-free life is for them. So it's been really exciting. I'm learning new techniques. So that in itself takes a lot of work. The fact that I'm in this program, the fact that I'm practicing this, 
the fact that every day I need to make time for all this work that I'm doing. And at the same time, I'm reading a book um, about codependency because I've had a battle with codependency my whole life. And just when you really think you have like a good grip on it, you something happens where you just swirl back into it. So I wanted to make sure that I went back um, to therapy notes and I went back to uh, just the realization of how I can fall into codependency traps. So like I'm reading a codependency book and I'm taking walks around the lake and really listening to the chapters and re-listening to them until all the information sinks in. And I mean, all of this is really time consuming. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. Daily upkeep of my mental and physical health is a priority for me too. And one of the things I'm most grateful for. And I think it's really important in the child-free community that you take advantage of that. Because if you're physically and mentally healthy, you're going to probably be happier. Not everyone, but you know. Yeah. So, and that takes a lot of work. And as a parent, you don't have as much time probably to focus on yourself. And I'm only saying that because we've heard that from a lot of people. Right. From the people we've heard. Yeah. Right. And I some parents, some like, parents yeah. they have a, there's OC, you know, they, they, oh, what is OC? Is it OCD. They're oh. OCD in the sense of their schedule and they can work that into their, to their schedule. So that's fantastic. I wouldn't have been one of those parents. You know, I don't know many of those parents, but. It is, I, do, I think we owe it to ourselves, right? As, as child-free people to take advantage of that and to work on that. And that's something we want to do with our community uh, moving into 2024, which is health and wellness and child-free child health and wellness. Because I think that that is, uh, it's, a, it's a massive, massive perk in my opinion. Yes. And it's amazing how much I work on it. I mean, we were just talking about it to share. We always said we're going to be fully transparent on this podcast. So, you know, I just came to a big realization that was monumental that I don't think I would have come to if I was distracted. Right. We'll say that, which, you know, and I've been through several phases of change and, and I've had to, I had to shift away from a lot of my old bad habits and kind of recreate new ones and move into this better space for me mentally and physically. And I just came to a realization recently that I'm now at this plateau and I'm ready to level up again. Mm -hmm. And that takes so much time and effort. And what did I say to you when I, when I said, I'm realizing what I need. I, when we first got to Austin, I was looking for therapists Yeah, and maybe some of you can relate to this, but, um, I was looking for therapists and I remember the therapist was like, well, what, what do you need? What are you looking for? And I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I had just gone through a big transformation mentally right. and physically. Right. So, um, I didn't know. And now it took three years. I mean, it's COVID consider that a year, but kind of a wash yeah, yeah. and then two years, 2021, 20, 22, and now 23, yeah, almost three years, um, really figuring out what I need. Yeah. You know? And yeah, that's a whole different conversation, but it's, yeah. it just shows you the amount of work that goes into it. Yeah. And, how important and when it you is. shared it with me, it was really insightful and it was really well thought out. And, um, I really appreciated the the work that you put in just to go to step one. Like, what is it that I need? Yeah. And I'll let, so I'll that let... was already like really, you know, there was a big, there was a lot of work just going into figuring out what you need to work on next. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'll let, I'll let a little sneak peek of it. Cause I think yeah. that's fair if those are listening or watching and wondering. So, you know, yeah. for me, I quit drinking. Um, I'm over four years sober. And, and that was like a big change. I think anyone that quits drinking that has a drinking problem, which I clearly did. Yeah you're going to, you're going to have a massive shift in your life. Cause I mean, my world surround was, sur I, my whole universe was drinking, right. That right. was part of who I was as a person. Mm -hmm. And I started when, you know, back in senior year of high school. And when I stopped drinking, there's an elation that goes along with it because you're sober, you feel better, you know, and you have this, you have a lot of real self-realizations and you grow pretty quickly, mm -hmm. but it plateaus. And that's really what's happened. And I won't go into the details of that full arc yeah. into my plateau. But what I've realized is, is that when you really are finding yourself with alcohol, not in the picture, mm -hmm. what happened to me specifically is I had to start over again. And, and in the sense that I didn't really know who I was. Mm -hmm. So in a way I had to revert back to when I was pre-drinking, which was teen years. Right. And now I'm 51, almost 52, and I'm starting over. Right. And it's like, 
really, I mean, I've had a couple panic attacks, as you know, it's really hard, but yeah. I finally came to the realization that that's what I need. Yes. I really need to dive in with who is now that I'm kind I'm comfortable being sober and, you know, being very, uh, self-aware and all the things that go along with clearing your mind out from toxins and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What they did, what I didn't expect, which is where I'm at now is who am I? What's my identity? Who am I? Right. You know, how do I interact with people socially if I'm not comfortable with it? Cause I don't have that lubricant right. of alcohol. Right. How do I, um, you know, go on into a work environment and, and, and meet new people or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. It's very difficult. It's not just social stuff. It's internal. Like, what do I do with my day if I'm not doing something and getting ready to have happy hour? You know, it's just, yeah. it was very hard. So I know now going into therapy that that's what I'm going to focus on, which is really figuring out who this new person is because I don't know. And I finally yeah. came to that realization that I don't know. I thought I knew. Yeah, because I'm still that I'm 52 years old on this planet. 52 years on this planet, you would think I would know, but I don't, and that's okay. And I kind of for forgiven myself for that. Does that make sense? Yeah, and thank you for sharing all that. And that is um, a lot of work and very time consuming, uh, both you know mentally draining and you know just doing everything that you just explained. And it really makes me think about. When people say, because we were just talking about it the other day, when people say, oh, but you would be such a good dad or, oh, but you would be such a good mom. And thinking about like everything you were going through uh, for many, many years and people, because you did tell me that people did say like, oh, you would be such a good dad. You have to have kids without really knowing what was going on behind the scenes. It, it just proves that people want to when they push that narrative on others, they don't even understand what is that person even able to handle that level of responsibility, right? Like people have said to me, like, you would make such a good mom. It, you, you know, a lot of the time it happens like while you're holding a baby or when you're playing with kids. I know you've gotten that, like you'd yeah. be such a good dad when you're playing with a kid um, because we can be fun and entertaining and things like that. But it goes so far as, you know, when people when people have told me, but you would be such a good mom and they focus on the person that I am at that moment in time. Right. Like I'm a good friend. I'm reliable. Um, they can. Um, I'm kind. I'm patient. You know, all these qualities that they enjoy about me, but they don't think of what is Veronica going to be like when there's this completely different experience that she's going through by having a child? Like, am I going to be the most patient ever? I don't know. Is my, you know, I wasn't born the most patient ever. I had to get there. Am I going to just stay calm all the time and not let things get to me and, you know, be this? Am I going to be this great friend that goes above and beyond for people? You know, while I have a child, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And it's interesting to me for someone to say to someone like you or anyone else who has any sort of addiction, you'd be such a good dad without really knowing if the person would be or not, because they don't really have all the information that they need to make such a powerful statement and to also get into the person's head and make them think, oh, maybe I should do this thing, right? Yeah, I think it's two things for me. You know, I think it's there's a join the club mentality mm -hmm. kind of thing that's happening. Like, this is what you do. Join the club. Come on board so we can hang out. Our kids can hang out. And there's mm -hmm. there's that. Right. It's a community mm -hmm. of comfort, uh, for lack of a better phrase. But and then the second part is, is they're seeing the surface you. They're not seeing what's right. going on internally, which right. you're really outlining, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I knew internally that I wasn't, I, I'm not saying I would have been a bad father, but I know that I wouldn't, I wasn't in a place to take on that responsibility. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to say it. Cause who knows you yeah. know, what would have happened. But, um, but when someone's looking at your life and you as a person and all these great things, I mean, yeah, some of your friends might know the stuff that's deep seated that you're going through that are real issues, but most of the time they're judging you based off of kind of what they're seeing at that point. Right. 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 And um, it's tough because, yeah, they do want to rope you in. Um, they not, they right. don't want to rope you in, but they want to. <laughs> sorry. 
you know, that, that feels like that sometimes. sometimes feels like that. Apologies. That's not yeah, always yeah. true. But I mean, I can see how they would think that, you know, they yeah. would think that you would be a good mother. So you right. need to do this. Right. And I think it's just a good point to know that some people are in pain, they're suffering, they're dealing with a lot of things behind the scenes. And when you're, you know, taking this idea of like, oh, why don't you have a baby? Like, they're not even thinking about like how much that would just like ex could potentially like send you into a place that you don't want to belong in. So anyway, yeah. thank you for sharing that. I wasn't trying to discount it. I was just thinking about while you were saying it, how, because you've shared with me before, how people have said to you and make such a good dad, but yeah, surface level, all very surface level. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I think, um, you just, you just don't know, but I, I'm happy that I was able to realize that this is this needs to at least be put on hold before I really understood that yeah. life without children is is a great life. Right. You know, <laughs> which is I love my life. I've talked about that over and over. Yeah, um, absolutely. So again, back to gratitude. Uh, you know, I want this to be too Yeah, yeah I don't know. We got heavy. Melodramatic, but, yeah. but you know, I, I think that it's important to talk about what we really do enjoy. And another one is just I think we really value being able to wake up, A, do what we love, which is this. Mm -hmm. And B, also just being spontaneous and, and being able to hang out. We're lucky enough to have some a bunch of child-free friends here. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, I would say that's my close second because, you know, how I get, I'm getting on my soapbox here, on, on you know, but the life is short. And as, yeah. as you get older, you realize that more and more and being able to be spontaneous and go do the things you genuinely want and not being held back financially or because of responsibilities is a huge, I'm, I've, I, I have a lot of gratitude for that. You know, we're able yeah. to experience things. We were talking recently that when our lease is up, we may mm -hmm. have a two month lag before our- At least two months, maybe Before three. we move into our next apartment. Yeah. And we might go to Buenos Aires for two years. You know, you're from Argentina. Month. Month. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. We're... Well, um, it's cheap to live there. Maybe we should go there for two years. Yeah, we're going to go for like maybe two or three months, probably. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. If again, we could work it out. we're talking about how lucky mm -hmm. we are, you know. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. And I have gratitude. I mean, even for the decisions that we make every day, right? Like, do we want to, uh, let's say we need to go to Trader Joe's. Like, do we want to go now? Do we want to go later after work? Would you rather just go tomorrow? Just little decisions that we're making every day. Um, the fact that we can make appointments, like we don't have to worry about making a doctor's appointment, ha conflicting with pickup at school or having a planning a weekend away and it's not conflicting with um, anything really. So, so that freedom of just the little day-to-day -day -day things that we don't have to worry about. And obviously at this point, we're aware that our kids would be older. It was actually really funny because we had someone on YouTube call us. Uh, what was it? Oh, they said it was, uh, they said that we're no spring chicken. <laughs> we aren't. At least I think that way. I know you were like, we're not old. And I'm like, I feel old. Oh, I said, I was laughing. I didn't yeah. mind it at all. No, I, I, I was agreeing. And when I responded, I agreed. I'm like, yeah, I know we're not spring chickens. So she was saying like, you know, you're not spring chickens, so you wouldn't have a, a small child anyway. But it's funny because you don't know at this age, because I just saw a post earlier and it's so true because I, we're in that weird age where you know, either you're, um, you could be a grandparent, you know, or you have friends that just decided to have a kid three years ago and have a toddler running around. Yeah. So it's really interesting. But yeah, it, it's funny that, that they were like, well, why are you even talking about the, you know, having babies or having toddlers or, you know, you're no spring chickens. But the reason that we bring it up is not literally for ourselves. It's just to, we like to talk about the Ex the experience that we chose rather than parenthood and it doesn't matter how old we are because we could have a toddler right now if we wanted to or if not if we wanted to if we were able to have one because we don't know we haven't tried i mean um, we're really at the age where we could have grandchildren i just said that you said child no no, no. i said grandparent oh grand we could be grandparents yeah 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 that yeah. is, that's a whole nother stress, right? you think grandparents are stressed? I never really asked that question. Well, it depends. I don't know. I mean. Um, I could ask my parents, I guess. 
someone just, I forget who I was talking to. Maybe it was Rand. I can't remember who we were talking to that they were saying that they're um, someone, maybe it was his sister. Yeah, that's a little younger than me, but just by a year or two and she's a grandmother. So, you know, you just never know at our age what what can happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll say another thing that I just to pivot out of that is, you know, one thing I am very grateful is the ability to learn and grow mm -hmm. intellectually and just be able to read. Yes. And I just didn't do a lot of that. I was so focused on my career and, you know, I wasn't, I didn't spend a lot of time really um, self-educating. I never really, I just thought you, in order to learn, you go to school. Right. And you really taught me when we met, like, no, you can actually learn on your own. I'm like, what's that about? You're like, they're called books. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, and I have learned, I have a learning disability of dyslexia and reading comprehension. So like, I never really loved to read. Right. And, right. You know, I've heard of self-help books, but I always kind of brush them off. Like, oh, there's self-help. I've yeah. heard of that genre of books. Yeah. You know, I'm, you know, I'll read a fiction or maybe. But um, but now that there's podcasts and there's you know audio books, yeah, and I'm an auditor, I'm an auditory learner. Is that what you say? Auditory yes. learning. Yeah. Um, now I'm an auditory learner. You know, it's been amazing. Like I'm reading Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, and it's like every I time know. And I we know. have that. I'm the I'm, point of bringing this up is because we have the time to do this. You right. know? And I'm not saying again, parents don't look yeah. at me giving the caveat. I'm not supposed I to know. do that. I know. I know. But we, we fall do. Into it I know. Too. I'll stop. Sorry. It's. it's but um, it is nice to know, like, I could wake up and spend an hour and a half stretching and listening to two chapters of that book and right. feeling better and really growing and learning. Right. Exactly. You yeah, know? no, it's amazing. I mean, we have so much gratitude for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you always been just a natural learner, by the way? Just a side sidebar here. I have. I have. So I've always... Uh... Learning to me was just fun. I know that we've talked about it and, you know, school for you is just like this dreadful place. And actually, I can understand that because back then we didn't have all the services that they have now. We didn't have all the, um, you know, school psychologists necessarily, school aides, like all the help that you may have needed as a child right. that are provided to children um, now. So I can understand being in a classroom and like not and be, and having to read for 45 minutes and and not understanding anything that it says like that's really frustrating it's very frustrating it's, it's you know it's it's really i mean being with you you're the first person i've been with with um a reading comprehension issue and i've really come to understand what it means what it is how much it affects you and yes, we're so happy that you have all these other ways to to avoid that now yeah. um, for the most part. So um, I didn't have any of those issues. So for me, especially being, you know, being having immigrant parents and being an immigrant myself and just trying to take advantage of this opportunity, I just felt that, you know, I'm in America and this, you know, trying to live the dream. So I very much felt from the time that I was in first grade that this learning is a privilege. Yeah, I really did. And I took that to heart and I took that way past college graduation. And anytime I have an opportunity to learn, I take it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think even if you had kids, you'd still be figuring out a way to learn. Yeah. Yeah. That, that'd be I one just thing really you've enjoy worked. it. I yeah. like to learn how to do things. Uh especially the things I care about and passionate about, but I also like to learn just random things. I like to learn about them. I now like to learn. You do. I do. I, you do. I didn't realize that there is joy in that, you know, again, <laughs> but I was confused when you said that. I was like, you must just be an outlier because all my friends yeah. hated school too, but I guess birds of a feather and all, right. you know? So it was like one of those things where I'm just like, wait, school sucks. And that's the overarching theme. And you're like, I love school. And I'm like, Oh, you're one of well, the few people that I, I love school because school is you really were like hard. in the front of the class with the apple full on first to raise their hand to answer a question. I'm like hiding in the back because I didn't read my chapter of homework or if I read it, I certainly didn't understand it. Make fun of myself. Yeah, we had different experience. But yeah, learning is huge for both of us now. And we do like to, to take the time to do that. Sometimes we'll go on a walk and listen to a book together. Like I think we have like three books on hold that we want to start reading when we go on our walks. So that, yeah. that we really enjoy doing that as well. Another thing, if you're not doing that and you're yeah. listening to it, I 
I, you know, and, and you struggle with it, especially, you know, cause if you, if you love, love it, you're most likely doing it. Yeah. But if you struggle with it, just know that, you know, figuring out a way that suits you best to learn and grow and learn all these new things. It's really fun. And, and I really enjoy it. And it's easier for me to have conversations with people that I'm talking about sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Another thing that we're grateful for, which we've talked about in the past, is that we have the time to work on a relationship. Huge. <laughs> Huge. That takes time. Effort. <laughs> that takes a lot of time. A lot. And it's, you know, we also, let's yeah. set the stage here. We, we, uh, we live in a 600 square foot, pretty much an alcove studio, right? It's a small yeah, it's, it's pretty small, small. It's a small apartment. And we work room apartment. And we work together pretty yeah. closely. But we have figured out little things to make it work through trial and error. And that error was very rough on our relationship for a little while. Because the yeah. trial and error part was was tough. But we figured it out, which yeah. is the good news. And yeah. there is there are ways to fig figuring that out. But And let me just set it up. We had to we lived in a bigger place and had to have an emergency um move i won't even get to that story because that was a complete nightmare yeah. and leave our lease early and we needed an interim place and we found this um because we had about two days to move uh and it's a beautiful place but it is really tiny but regardless you know a lot of people that you know because their their job switched from you know going into the office to work from home so a lot of couples are confined more than i would think before covid right um right. and we have friends who they both yeah we I have mean, quite I know a, a lot friends. of people and before yeah. i didn't it was always that more traditional you mm -hmm. know either both people went off to work or one person left the house and you didn't see them till later mm -hmm. we've implemented that back that's my first tip for those who do work try to work in separate areas and i'm not talking separate areas of your apartment or your house or wherever yeah. you have to be but actually different go, countries create make a coffee office your a coffee office make yeah. a coffee shop your office yeah or and, any place that's available or any place yeah. and what's nice is when we go and do our own thing and when we come in come back to the apartment around five o'clock it's really refreshing you know it's nice it's like right. oh there you are yeah. you know we can talk to each other on slack or whatever call each other yeah the yeah day. no that has been good for us yeah, to not be the, on top of i think that was one the most key thing was you know yeah we, no, because what happens is there's underlying issues right and you don't really sometimes you can deal with them deal with them try your best but then when you're on top of each other and confined in a really small space those issues can't run away anywhere yeah. you have to face them and then on top of that because you're in a confined space there are more issues that build on top of that. So yeah. yeah, needless to say, we had a rough time for a while. We're in a much better place, but we both really need to do a lot of self-reflection and a lot of evaluating our relationship. And are we happy? Are we not happy? Are we taking it to where we want to take it to? Um, and I think separating for a little while was good. Uh, yeah. We didn't have a separation. I just went home to visit um, friends for a while. And, uh, and yeah, and we've been working steadily on that and, and it's going really well after we figured out what all the issues were. Yeah. I think our rock bottom was when, um, I think we both looked at each other equally and we were just like, I am sick and tired of looking at you. And she was just like, and I was like, me too. Yeah. I think we both said it. I kind of equal. We were both on the same page. Yeah, we were. We were both exactly. And you know what? It was I'm like happy one of us was like, and the other one was like, oh and, my god. And you know what? Yeah. Anyone would be. I. I mean, maybe yeah. there's a couple couples out there. Yeah. That would be able to. We were annoying. Like it, hang it, out twenty four seven. Yeah, we were just like, I can't even look at you. I know, yeah, I that's know. how much. That's how annoying you are. Like, and then it transferred from work to like every single thing around the house. Of like, course. if you picked up something up that annoyed me, I was just like, oh, I can't stand you. I know. It, yeah, it, and I was awful. doing the same thing to you. But yeah. But to take it deeper, you know, yeah. outside of just working together because a lot of couples don't work together but um you know being child free and being able to work on our relationship on a deeper level i mean we've we've always been we've talked a little bit about how yeah. we've been in therapy um mm -hmm. relationships do take work mm -hmm. on the surface they might seem like they look you know we've seen like you guys are so perfect and blah blah, blah and i yeah. and it's very nice that they see it but yeah. we like everyone you know we're real we have problems we need to work on those problems 
we have we come from different backgrounds we have our own trauma yeah um and all that comes and feeds into the relationship obviously so you need to unpack that you need to have be at a therapist and really dive into that and understand mm -hmm. each other's trauma or back quote unquote baggage that you bring to the relationship to be able to and your personality traits and your differences and all those things and we, as you know as since we do have extra time in our schedules, we spend a lot of time really focusing on those things. And I yeah. think that's really important. And it's, it's nice. I feel like I also know you on a deeper level. Um, mm -hmm. Because I'm able to really dive into and understand, you know, where you where you're coming from, literally, yeah. before you met me, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I also think it was good this time around, because um, we've mentioned her before we had, and still have um, an amazing couples therapist. I mean, she's in incredible but she's very expensive yeah. <laughs> she's very very expensive and at this time we felt like we were in crisis and we really could use her and we got to the point where we're like we're just gonna have to you know figure it out and and start talking to her but we know that that's not accessible to everyone and we 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 felt like okay that's not really accessible to us right now so what can we do ourselves Right? right. To get the ball rolling on that, because um, we don't want to go into that financial hole of seeing her, you know, every week, at least once a week or twice a week. And we weren't able to do that. So just for people listening out there that may have, be having issues with with um, your partner, it it's it is possible to also just work on it yourself as best as you can and maybe just hold yourself at a level that is somewhat bearable until you can get some professional help. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, and just to, to bridge the gap there until you can, you can find someone that works with you or you can afford it. You know, I think what we've learned, and I can share this because if it helps someone, you know, it's going to make my day. But what we've learned is being fully transparent with each other and putting our egos to the side yeah. has been our best solution to, to really reset when we're having a bad go of it, yeah. right? Is to just really try to stay calm and just be completely honest with ourselves and with the other person about yeah. everything that's in her is as hurtful as it might be. Or if you're trying to defend your side, it's never going to go anywhere. If I'm trying yeah. to defend myself, if I come into a, an argument with you and I'm like ready with my armor on and I'm ready to defend what, how I feel, it's going to go bad yeah, you're because gonna I, that you're going to sense that. My armor goes right up. Your armor too. goes right up and now you're clinking together and it's just yeah. like going nowhere. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I just can't say that enough, but it has to come from both parties. That's the problem. Yeah. You know, one person's transparent and the other one is, and it's not going to happen. But if you're both just honest and transparent and you're coming down and sitting down with good intentions to be like, I'm wrong about this stuff. Yeah. And I understand that. And I want to change vice versa. You do the same. Yeah. How can it not go well? And, or at least help. Well, that it's it's really difficult to get to that point, right? To get to the point where somebody can say, I'm half the problem. I think that that is a struggle in some people's relationships and really not only acknowledge it, but try to work on what you're doing and your part to let that happen, right? And sometimes what you're doing is um, can be kind of coming from love and kindness and respect, but it's still not the right thing to do at the time or the right way to handle something. So, yeah. So we love having the ability. We're very grateful very. to have the time to uh, work on our, um, on ourselves. Cause we're both very complicated. <laughs> we're very complicated. You're fire. I'm stubborn and that doesn't make for a good combination. No. <laughs> um, so work on your relationship. Um, really, I want to, kind of close with the whole work, you know, taking care of ourselves for, and, and really we talked about that from a physical mental space, but also in a financial space even earlier, but you know, what our life is going to look like in 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now, you know, right. and right. I think that's important. I mean, what do you, what do you value as far as gratitude about your future self at 70 or 80 years old? And what are you doing now to prepare for you to be happy in that at that time? Right. I mean, I'm not going to get into because that's going to be a whole other hour podcast as far as like fi financial planning and as far as estate planning and all of that. I think that I feel that I am responsible for how my 70s, 80s and 90s are going to look like. 
And I don't feel it in a way that it weighs on me, the responsibility, but I feel it in a way where it actually liberates me because I welcome that, right? Like I want to take care of, like we just talked about my mental and my physical health, right? I were really big on building community because I am a social person and I do want people around me. And that's really important to me. And that's something I work on all the time and have always worked on. I think that building community is huge. And especially, I mean, there's so much research out there saying that elder, um, the elder community feels very alone, but this isn't just about being child free. It's all, all it's, yeah, yeah. It's, there, there's a, there's a problem of isolation as you get older and it's parents too. And the fact is that it's our responsibility to be aware of that and check on that. And as you get older, like who is around me? Who can I support that maybe could support me back? Who will be there for me? And I will be there from back. And sometimes it's family and a lot of times it's not. So building community is extremely important to me because I see so many of, you know, our parents, our friends' parents, uh, you know, just feeling really alone and isolated. And I feel that that is something that we can take responsibility for, whether you're an extrovert or an introvert. You know, for example, like in our community, we have introverts. It doesn't mean that you have to hop in the community and be like loud and and, you know, show off and post every day and be a part of everything. It's like, no, maybe you just want to um be a little less but, alone. Yeah. You know? Maybe you just want to see that other people think like you, that other people, maybe you just want to be aware that we even exist. Like, it's just really up to us to feel safer. And that to me is really important. That's something that I think about all the time. Um, and the last part is, which I said, is like thinking about our financial future. Because I think that the thing that concerns me the most is not about all those fearful, um, you know, fearful comments that people say about child-free people. I think it's about the fact that we are all living longer, right? So it makes me think a little bit extra about, okay, if we're going to live beyond, and obviously that's just, none of us have a guarantee, but I'm saying if the human population is going to live longer because of technology and because of what they're going to be able to help us with and our help in the future, that makes me think about like, okay, then therefore we need to be prepared to, if we're going to live longer, to be able to take care of ourselves financially, right? Sure. So and different things that go into it, but there aren't, I, I feel that because I have that sense of responsibility for what my life will look like when I'm older, I have like a sort of, it feels safe to me because I'm in control of it. Yeah. So then, right? No, yeah, I like that. And in bringing it back to the, your community point, I think it is so crucial to build your, especially as a child-free person, to find your people. I mean, I know that's kind of a corny saying, but it is true. You yeah. know, it's, you got to find your tribe. You got to, because, I mean, it has been proven that your health depends on it. You know, people live longer that interact with more Absolutely. people. Absolutely, yeah. When you're isolated and alone. Yeah, it's been proven scientifically. This isn't me. That yeah, you do, I did a we did a video on it. I did less, a video yeah, on it yeah. to show like what happens when you live in isolation. Yeah, and you know, I know your dream, which is to own a retirement community that's all child free at some point. You would love to do that. I, I'm not against it. It seems like a yeah. big undertaking, but yeah. how great would that be? Just to you know, I'm on it. You know, yeah. you don't have grandchildren coming in to disrupt the flow. You know, it's more like we're all in this together and we're taking care of each other. I mean, we never, everyone leaves this planet alone. I get that. Death is, is, is there, you know, there's no escaping it, but you can certainly be, you want to feel like you're, 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 you know, you're part of something and you're part of a community um, as you, you know, cause it's fun, you know, while you're, while you're here, you want to have fun. Yeah, you wanna, we want to be active, you wanna be active and we want to, I mean, we've heard from several uh, people in their seventies and eighties talking about who live in retirement communities and telling us that it's actually still happens in those communities where everyone's talking about the grandkids visit for the holidays or whenever the visit is. And they're sitting around and just sharing photos of all the grandkids and that they sit there just feeling bad about themselves, not bad about themselves, just isolated from the conversation, you know, similar yeah. to how we were 
isolated, um, you know, in your 20s or your 30s when you're sitting around a big table with all your mom friends and you're feeling isolated because all they're doing is talk about the kids. So it's funny because I had never really thought of that before, but the more that people share that with us, that that's happening in retirement communities as well, I always just thought that was really interesting. So yeah, that's where the idea sparked of like, we need to have our own um, space to, yeah. to, to, uh, to live in when we're older. So we'll see what we could do about that. Well, I'm certainly happier. Um, and I uh, thank you for that because you really, this is this was really the beginnings were all you and building this. So thank you for yeah, introducing of me to of course. You know, people here in Austin and making friends with, you know, uh, you know, other like-minded child-free people as well as um, everyone in our, in our community. But yeah, yeah of it's course. fantastic. And we're doing it inside our community, but we also encourage if you're listening, if you're watching, like take your time this month to appreciate the little things. The fact that you can run to the drugstore whenever you want or the fact that you can go to the gym at, at whenever you want, if you can, or the fact that you can manage your schedule, even if you're a nine to five, that is very um, strict on their time. The fact that before and after your day can look like whatever you want it to be. So yeah, let's all just take time this month. And um, I think it's really important that we appreciate this lifestyle and this choice uh, because it's just a beautiful path to life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the life that's in front of you is your life, you know, whether you have kids or not. And yeah, that's a great message. Yeah. You know, really just appreciate, take a step back from the stresses that we talked about earlier and every all the outliers that come into you, even though you don't have children and realize that there's so much to be grateful for. I love that message. We'll end on that and sending gratitude to everyone that's listening or watching. And, uh, we will see you next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye.